Good evening, everybody. Hell's Unicorn here once again. There's been a little bit of a tempest brewing with a user that I am very much familiar with and one whom I've had some correspondence with in the past. And uh, apparently what has happened is that uh, a video that she did specifically regarding uh, the issue of military and interventionism and specifically the last uh, three conflicts that we've been involved in has suddenly gone viral. This is something that has had a tendency to happen spontaneously for seemingly no reason. Usually it has to do with somebody with the ability to mass communicate something finding the video. But the long and short of it is the title of this video is why I don't why I do not support the troops. And it's been done by a woman uh, by the name of Liberty Chick Live. I know her better as Cassie Dill. Now, the contents of the video are essentially your run-of-the-mill common sense criticisms that generally tend to come about whenever you deal with leaked information that has come out uh, via WikiLeaks and a few other individuals involved in the military who had a hard time stomaching keeping some of the more grotesque things that our government does behind closed doors secret. I am course, of course I'm all for this. I think the more disclosure the better and I think the uglier the government looks the more truth is being told. Now the thing I find a little bit interesting is that uh, Cassie Dill is not saying anything that I haven't heard before. It's just usually when I hear people say they don't support the troops, I usually hear it from people like Maoist News and other communist YouTube users who nobody watches. Hearing it from somebody who has a somewhat of a fairly strong following and who is not a so-called fringe leftist is something that probably shocks a lot of people and that's probably the main reason why she's getting this much attention but this is just me prefacing what I'm actually going to be talking about I'm not so much interested in her video itself because I, I pretty much know how it works uh, I concur with most of her sentiments in this video but I instead wanted to focus on some of the reactions that she got now the interesting thing is that these reactions are well beyond just the scope of YouTube. In fact, there are several independent bloggers who have put up some rather juicy tales. And the one I'm going to read for you is something that should be instructive. Not so much about the fact that our military has a few bad apples in it. That's something that goes without saying. This is to instruct all of you how ideological persuasion within the general two-party paradigm makes little difference when it counts and this is one of these instances the blog in question which I am going to link to for all of you to see is I am Bill there is a link in the description and I'm going to read this and I'm going to provide some occasional asides just to give my own personal reactions and then afterwards I'm going to sum up exactly what the point of this is this was done today, or Wednesday, July 13th, in the year of our Lord, 2011. The author of this blog describes himself as being a liberal army medic, father, husband, son, and asshole. It's, an, it's interesting that he actually disclosed what he is in the last little noun or adjective, excuse me, I should say. <laughs> so here it goes. Ignorance at its finest. And it reads, So a buddy of mine here turned me on to this charming video today. It is titled, Why I Do Not Support the Troops. Liber Liberty Chick Live posted this video claiming things that, while are true, emphasize are true, are half-truths and misrepresentations of things that happened during war times. The thing you have to understand is that half-truths, when talking to a person like this, 
usually are actual whole truths. It's just they're told in a way that's not convenient for the person who's been trying to cover them up. <laughs> Continuing on. And he has embedded the video, and he says, here is the video. Please watch it. If you do not agree, flag it for being inappropriate. Oh, so he tells people to engage in a false flagging campaign. My, that is lovely. You see, there's a reason why I call this kind of a practice false flag terrorism, and that's because I know that it pisses people like this off. And let's continue on. Now, as you can see, she is completely misinformed and ignorant on many, many subjects. Ooh, do tell. The facts she gives us are one million civilian casualties in Iraq, the James Barker and other rape cases, and the collateral murder video. She also says that soldiers fall into three categories, dumb, evil, or morally compromised. I just want to tell all of you right, front, right up front that all three of these kind of apply to this writer, and you'll see why in just a moment. I will attempt to control my anger and contempt for her and address these things with a calm head, which he fails at. Facts. Number one, the collateral murder. If you have not seen the collateral murder video, I have seen it in its most gruesome details. Continuing, you can go to YouTube and find it. I will not dignify the video by posting it here. Oh, I'm sure you won't. I will not get into how the video got made public. It was WikiLeaks and the country's savior, Bradley Manning, that unlawfully released the video. So the reason why this individual is butthurt is not because what's on the video actually happened, but that it got released. There's a reason why I don't like statism, and that's because the religious implications of it make crap like this possible. The fact that this guy is talking this way indicates that reason is not really high on his radar. Continuing. The 17-minute video is edited from a 34-minute video and the voiceover is edited from the Apache pilots it is also edited. I will not go through this video step by step, but I found a great breakdown of the video from a soldier that monitored video feeds for up to 26 months in Iraq. Please take a look at this site. I will wait. And then WikiLeaks collateral murder, and there's a link to it. The video is used to further a political gain, whether or not that is an honest or honorable thing to do. No, yeah, the political gain is full disclosure, and I would say that's a very honest and honorable thing to do. What is honest about keeping things hidden from the people that are paying the bills and being held responsible for the bloodshed by the family members of the victims. Can you answer this for me, you numbskull? I suppose not. Continuing on, number two. Over a million civilian murders in Iraq. He, she said casualties, not murders. But anyway, continuing. This fact is also overblown and taken from sources that are not credible in their reporting. Why is this? He explains. Many of the deaths she is talking about are deaths from insurgents and terrorists suicide bombing their own people. Really? 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 Well, I have something to inform you about, uh, Mr. Bill Gorski. The people that are suicide bombing all of these places are mostly not from Iraq. They're Wahhabists from Saudi Arabia, some of them are from North Africa, maybe Libya, and they're there because we are there. We're not shooting these people ourselves, but we might as well be, given that what is happening happened because of something that we did and are continuing to do. I'm of a mind to represent, uh, to submit a reading list to this individual similar to the one that Ron Paul gave to Rudy Giuliani, but I doubt this guy has the reading comp uh, comprehension capabilities to understand what's in it, so I won't bother. Continuing, the real number is much smaller than she accounts for, for which how shoddy her investigation is. So he's saying the real number is basically the numbers of people that we've actually shot, our military has actually shot themselves, as if this makes it any better, as if the people that were killed by the suicide bombers, which were also our fault, makes them a little less dead. I guess they're a little more dead if we give them the double tap in the head with our own soldiers, huh? 
priceless. Continuing. This website, which after some research is very close to the accurate amount of uh, the Iraq body count, and it shows what is happening with the civilian deaths in that country. Notice where the majority of the deaths are coming from. Yes, from something that is still our fault. Civilian deaths are a horrible, scarring, and traumatizing side effect of war, but to think that we are doing it on purpose is terrible. Well, we all, cons well, Congress consented, gave you the money, told you to go over there based on lies. So we have culpability. We're not shooting them. We're not doing it with our own hands, but we, they're dead and it's because of us. So again, I, and if civilian deaths are such a horrible and scarring and traumatizing thing, then why are we making them happen by being there? Why are we over there? Because it's the war on terror, son, and we got to kill us some towel heads, maybe? I don't know. I don't think any of these guys are actually man enough to give me an honest answer like that whenever I ask them. Anyway, continuing. SPC James Parker rape case. Here we go. This is where it gets real juicy. This is a terrible story, and terrible people are being punished for committing a terrible act, an act which was made possible by, what, by them being over there, I might add. Soldier gets 90 years in Iraqi rape case. This is the link to the site. This tells us all that we need to know. They are going to jail and facing the death penalty for what they did. They, what they did was made possible by them being over there. I have to keep repeating this so that some people can get it through their thick, empty skulls. Continuing. This woman says that soldiers are commended for doing terrible, or condemned, commended for doing terrible things, where the facts show that they go to jail and possibly are put to death for the things they have done. Military courts might put these people to death, but the average meathead neocon, and apparently also the average meathead liberal, doesn't really give a shit about this stuff. Continuing. Not all soldiers are good people. Well, I think we can pretty well deduce that from what you just said, Mr. Platitude. Just like not all civilians are good people. Oh, oh, we're civilians. Oh, oh, almighty soldiers and mighty masters of our safety, please dignify us with our official title of civilians. Dehumanize us into a mass of people lesser than you because we are not getting ourselves killed in the name of your oh, great and holy cause. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing more patronizing than being called a civilian, particularly by a boneheaded numbnuts like this. But nonetheless, continuing. People are flawed, some to a much worse extent than others, and they are caught and held accountable for their actions. But their actions happened, and they wouldn't have if we had a different policy. Continuing. I was going to go into the three categories that she put soldiers into, but you that are reading this know that this is bullshit. Well, I don't know that this is bullshit, and quite frankly, I was hoping to see a little more jackassery out of you, but I guess this is going to be cut short. Continuing. I do not think that I am dumb. I do. Evil. I do. Or morally compromised. I definitely do. More so than the other two, necessarily, but I think you're a pretty... This is a significant combination of the three. I know what is going on here, more than some, less than others, and I support things that we have done here, and I do not support others. Well, you're responsible for all of it because you agreed to this, and I assume that you had some idea that some of this stuff was going to happen, given a couple paragraphs back you said that this is a unavoidable side effect of war. But apparently you're okay with it then because you know it's going to happen. But continuing. I will not insult your intelligence and I do not feel that it is right to try to explain why you cannot divide soldiers into three categories. You insulted my intelligence the minute that you called me a civilian, mister. So I have no problem with you doing it some more because it's pretty well established where you stand. Continuing. I'm sorry if I rambled, but I wanted to say what I had to say, and now that I was professional and attempted to be intelligent about my points, I want to say this. 
get, I'm going to imitate what I think the tone of voice that he had in mind when he wrote this was, given that it's in all caps and it's really vulgar and really, really disgusting. But I'm going to read it so that you can understand exactly what kind of person I am reading from here. <clears throat> this woman is a cunt and should be sent over here to see what is really going on. Fuck this bitch and please, for all that is good and holy, let me meet her in real life. <laughs> the Confession of a Certifiable Nutcase that, in my opinion, shouldn't be trusted with a potato gun. And yes, that was a perfect word-by-word -word quotation. Continuing on. Okay, I feel much better now. Terrible things happen during war times, and I do not fully support the wars that we are in, even though I have spent 35 months of my life away from my family fighting them. Shit happens, and if the wrong shit happens, you are held accountable. We are not evil. We are not dumb. Thanks for reading, and if you did, if not, fuck off. I'm going to sum all of this up by just saying the following. As a person who was compelled by law and by force of the state to pay for the nonsense going on in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Libya, I at least feel entitled to say a few things about the people who I did not consent to supporting financially to carry these things out. People like this reflect upon all of us. People like this are the reason why terror threats exist. People say, well, we weren't doing anything to them back uh, before the 9-11 attacks. If there's anybody on here watching this that gives me that kind of a response, you really really need to dust off whatever history books you have in your shanty and start educating yourself. We have been engaged in various foreign policy debacles in the Middle East for the better part of the 20th century, let alone the past couple decades. The way the Ottoman Empire was broken up, the way that borders were drawn in the aftermath of World War II, all of this has significance. All of this feeds in to the current culture over there. Our support for various governments, our opposition to other governments and the way we express that opposition, all of this are stones in the great lake of foreign policy. And the ripples eventually come to the banks of the lake where we currently stand. Those who are gloriously ignorant about what's going on in the rest of the world are not with excuse in this because they have the opportunity to figure out this stuff. That was the great benevolence of what happened with WikiLeaks and the release of all of this stuff. We know what's going on. It's not the full extent of what's going on, but what is displayed in this leaked footage is stuff that actually happened. And if you're okay with this stuff happening over there, don't tell me that you don't support that, but you support the rest, because you get all of it regardless to your own little moral conundrums. I know that I'm not going to be a popular person for saying these things, especially since I'm defending someone that is the favorite whipping girl of a lot of lunatics here on YouTube, both on the left side or the right side. But I'm going to leave you with one last point here. I am often very, very rough on neoconservatives because those are the people that have been in power up until the past couple of years. But the current crowd in Washington now that is supposedly our alternative and the people that identify as being liberal that are in the military ain't any better. Sorry to say, son. So I guess you better buck up, pay your taxes, and expect the fact that if you live in a major city, eventually somebody whose family you killed is going to come and blow something up, and you just might get killed yourself. America, fuck yeah. I can't really do that. It's, this is the thing about it. In one sense, I'm almost envious 
of people that are ignorant and who don't pay attention to this stuff. But I know about it. And I have a conscience. And my conscience dictates to me that I can't support this stuff. I'm going to be forced to support this stuff because if I don't pay my taxes, I will be sent to jail or I will be killed. But I am going to protest openly as long as the government allows me to do it. And if Bill Gorski has a problem with it, I would just like to inform him that although I'm not a military man, I am a man of the world, and I am a man who clings to my bitterly to my guns and religion the way that your preferred president, Barack Obama, likes to say. As a matter of fact, everybody, I'm going to put a link in the description uh, to a story about the the troops of our country burning Bibles in Afghanistan. If any of you out there are Christians and claim to support the troops, I think you should take a look at this so you could find out what it, exactly it is you're supporting. You might think that, you know, God, country, and honor is some sort of axiomatic truth that you can cling to, but... God isn't really going with country right now, at least not so far as this particular link I'm providing you with is. And honor doesn't really seem to be a popular thing in this country anymore either. Take from it what you will. With prudence to myself and benevolence to all of you, good evening.